That's okay. it. Okay, so uh, good job, Brene, for uh, figuring out this um, mechanism. But let's go through it. So um, this actually should be excess. Okay, so what's going to happen first is the Grignard in addition to the acid chloride making the ketone intermediate, then addition again to that ketone making the um, alkoxide. In this case, it'll be a tertiary alkoxide. Okay. Um, then when you add acid to that, that's going to protonate that alkoxide. And then that resulting alcohol will get protonated. And then, like Renee said, he, you could do an E1 or an E2 reaction in, the, in this case. Okay. Um, probably you're going to do uh, the E1. Okay. Because you're going to get that tertiary carbocation. It's very stable, you know. But you could imagine either one of them going. Okay. So. If you don't remember from organic one, you got this. You've got to remember all this stuff, okay? So let's just go ahead and do this mechanism. Is that cool? Everybody want to do it? Okay. So like we said, um, ethyl magnesium bromide. Um, I like to put the arrow through the. And in this case, since we're going to further react it, I'm going to actually put, instead of just the abbreviation for ethyl, the actual ethyl group. Like that. Okay. Um, of course, that's going to collapse back down, knocking that H or the Cl out. Cl minus. There's your ketone intermediate that we were talking about. Next thing that's going to happen, well, we've got excess of that ethyl magnesium bromine. So remember, when we react excess um, Grignard with an acid chloride, it goes to the tertiary alcohol. get, of course, um, not the alcohol yet, but the tertiary alkoxide. Because Grignard reagents make a basic solution. One of these things that we're always constantly trying to harp on is that in a basic solution, you've got to have negative charges only or neutral stuff. And in an acidic solution, you've got to have positive stuff and neutral stuff. If you've got negative charge in an acidic solution, you know you've done something wrong, okay, or the opposite. So there's Sharon's little man, right? And so um, the H2SO4 reaction, um, it's got some water in there, you know, so um, we'll just say we're using the hydronium ion. And even if you were using sulfuric acid, of course, that's going to protonate the alkoxide. And then we're going to have another protonation of that, but this time the alcohol. So there's, here's the tertiary alcohol. So we're going to protonate again. Like that. And like we were saying, the next step could be in dispute. For me, I would say it's, it's probably reasonable to say that it would come off before the deprotonation for a couple of reasons, because this hydrogen here is hard to get to, you know, and this will make a stable carbocation. Okay, so the elimination here is going to take two <coughs> steps, more than likely, okay? So that's an E1 mechanism, right? So, uh, or 
I'm sorry. Um, leaving a believing group, can I erase the top part? Anybody? Tertiary carbocation. And of course, we've got water. That's also the product of that reaction. Um, it may be that water molecule, probably not, you know, but since that's the water molecule I just wrote, that's the one I'm going to use for the elimination or the deprotonation step, I guess. synthesis that you can do. Okay. So, um, and I guess we should probably write that we get the hydronium ion back. Just so there's no confusion about um, where those are. Are there any questions on this one? So, good job, Renee. <laughs> 